This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Friday, March 18th, wherever and however you're connected, Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who wishes his son had filled out his NCAA tournament brackets. His name is Jerem Jordan. Well, one piece of it only. Yesterday I mentioned that Tate picked, uh, he's three, picked St. Peter's to go to the ship. Well, well, he got uh, the Kentucky game right at least. (laughs) So I was telling him with six minutes to go, and I tweeted this out, dude, St. Peter's is in this, bro. Uh, Let's watch this. So my daughter was pretty distraught because she, of course, had Kentucky like every other rational person would. But for, like, only the 11th time ever, uh, 15 beat a 2. But that's the fun of this tournament. Like, I don't actually care how my racket does. I just want the games to be entertaining. And that's what I want out of, like, the NFL, too. That's why I don't enjoy fantasy football. It's like, I just want to watch and enjoy. I want to watch greatness. I don't want to care that... So-and-so got 29 points as a receiver with that last touchdown. Like, I just want to watch and enjoy the games. But, uh, you know, shout-out to everybody that had St. Peter's. By the way, ESPN says they have 192 perfect brackets left. Out of, like, 7 billion. (laughs) (laughs) Insane. How's your bracket doing? I got 11 of 16. A couple of things. A couple of things. Yeah. Never trust the Mountain West Conference. Ever. Don't trust the Mountain West. (laughs) Since 2010, we felt that way here, right? (laughs) <laughs> aye, aye, aye. I thought this would be yeah. the year because the conference and the teams there were all bent out of shape about being disrespected, not getting the seeds they deserve. Colorado State and Boise State specifically, oh, we're so disrespected. We're going to prove it on the court. Well, they're 0-4 and out of the tournament after day one. We don't feel that bad around here, do we? No. We don't feel that bad. And they're like, you still can't put it on KBYU. The West Coast Conference looked pretty good. St. Mary's one. disposed of Indiana, who oh frankly my. had no gas left in the tank. And they played five games in eight days. And the play of the day happened there. More on that coming up in the whip around. Certainly. Yeah. And then never root against a peacock, Jerem. I never do, honestly. <laughs> Person- Show those colorful personally. feathers. Yeah. And verify them on Twitter for crying out loud. They're not verified on Twitter? St. Peter's is it? Their account specifically asked for it yesterday. It said, verify his Twitter. <laughs> And their website was overloaded, apparently. Everyone was going to so good. the homepage. Nope. It's so amazing. Oh, and the freezing cold takes from Kentucky broadcasters have just been epic. Yeah. <laughs> Is Mark uh, Pope suddenly a candidate for the Kentucky job? Question mark. Uh, their guards are <laughs> under six feet. Kentucky should be able to do what they want to do when they want to do it. Dude, how about classic white dude with a mustache dropping threes late in the game? I was like, this guy's going to kill it. 20 points for that guy. He's going to kill it at the YMCA soon. (laughs) This guy's guy's so classy. Adam Morrison light? (laughs) No, Adam Morrison is like a national – well, mustache only. But, yeah, no, Adam Morrison is like 6'8". You and Adam Morrison are the two biggest Chelsea fans that I know. I have a conversation with him at least twice a year about about Chelsea soccer. I need to go talk to him. Yeah, Adam's a great dude. It's a weird time for uh, Chelsea right now. Yeah. (laughs) Your Friday show lineup will probably include a few more mentions about the Peacock, so just get ready for that. (laughs) Today's show also includes your crystal ball projections for BYU men's and women's basketball. It's Monday's headlines today. What tournament results are we going to be discussing on Monday morning? First team All-West Coast Conference star Paisley Harding will join the show. What's the key to slowing down the second leading scorer in the entire country and Villanova? Then college basketball and now NBA analyst Kristen Kozlowski will discuss the keys to a BYU win in Ann Arbor and making history with the Utah Jazz, plus more bracket busters. Let's go. Bring on today's BYU Sports Nation headlines. Spring football practice continues. Kalani Satake gives some praise to the offensive line. Probably see that there's guys lining up all over the place in the line and I think Coach Funk's doing a great job at rotating them, and but there's guys playing left and right, and inside and outside. It's just, it's, I think it's going to allow us to put the best out there, and maybe even have a rotation when it comes to O line. I like it. I like it. Coming up in what's trending, uh, Dave and Blaine have a recap from practice yesterday as well. Six seed BYU women's basketball. 
currently in Ann Arbor, Michigan for their first round matchup with the 11 seed Villanova Wildcats tomorrow in the first round of the NCAA tournament. The first matchup between these teams since 1995. It's been a while. Game tips at 1 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, live on BYU Radio and ESPN News. Yeah, you're catching a plane here today. Let's go. Men's basketball hosts Northern Iowa in the second round of the NIT. The NIT tomorrow night on ESPN Plus and BYU Radio. Pre-game on BYU Radio begins at 8 Eastern. Also, Seneca Knight tweeted, I'm done for the season, sadly, to answer everyone's questions. Everyone questions. Uh, he he injured his thumb against St. Mary's and didn't play after that. Get healthy, take the next step, become one of the dudes, because A.B. and T. John are both gone. There's, there's some shots available Yeah. next year. BYU softball moves to 17-6 and six on the season with a 5-2 win over Idaho State, really propelled by two home runs in the fifth inning from BYU, including this. BYU with two runs on five hits, Idaho State with one run on three hits. Here's the 0-2, Williams laces into that ball, and that's gone! Three-run home run for Taylor Williams, have a game! <laughs> wow. Taylor Williams was fantastic defensively as well, and obviously you saw the dynamite home run right there. The Cougars will host Southern Utah in a doubleheader tomorrow. Dave McCann making his softball debut on Yo, BYU baby. TV's app. Baseball wins the West Coast Conference opener at Portland 6-2 thanks to Jack Sterner, who while consuming a voodoo donut, gave up no earned runs in six innings. Game two tonight, 5 Eastern, 107.9 FM locally, nationally on the BYU Cougars app. Track and field. Have an outdoor meet today, but for some awards, the men's track and field star Zach McCorder was named the Mountain Region Men's Field Athlete of the Year. Not surprising, he is a pole vaulting superstar. For the women, Courtney Wayman named the Mountain Region Women's Track League Track Athlete of the Year, and Diljeet Taylor named the Assistant Coach of the Year. Triathlete. Triathlete. Does that work? Sure. Yeah, they're at uh, USC. So good luck. Gymnastics is competing in the MRGC Championships tomorrow, the conference championship. 8 Eastern in Boise against the Broncos, Southern Utah, and Utah State. NCAA Regionals coming up. BYU diver Kennedy Cribs and swimmer Tanner Nelson have both qualified to compete in the NCAA Championships. Sweet. Cribs competed in the individual medley event yesterday and will be on the platform event tomorrow. Nelson competed in the 500 meter yesterday and will compete in the 400 individual medley today and the 1650 freestyle tomorrow. What? Is it 16 Apparently. 50? Apparently. Are we serious right now? <laughs> what? Is that the marathon the of swimming? Sure it's not a 1600. Uh, yeah, why the extra 50? Uh, men's tennis hosts Portland tomorrow while women's tennis plays the Nerds from Harvard. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Tim Daly Nissan, part of the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. As we mentioned, it is Monday's headlines today. We want you to look into your crystal ball and project what's going to happen for the BYU women in the NCAA tournament and the BYU men in the second round of the NIT, or National Invitation Tournament. So, Jeremy, I turn it over to you. Hi. What will Monday's headlines today be when you are projecting ahead? Gon uh, Gonzalez and Harden go for 50. Woo! Okay. That, that's one option. Okay. Cougars win uh, cat fight in Michigan. Nice. Wildcats. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, Cougars corner Wildcats in first round blowout. <laughs> and then uh, men's one. One game away from MSG. You give me a hard time about being anchor boy. That right there proves you, too, could fill the anchor boy role whenever your heart so desires. I do work in television as exactly. well. Exactly. Exactly. Although, I, <laughs> yes. Anchor boy! <laughs> Anch I think anchor boy requires more alliteration. More alliteration? Yes. Well, the the Cougars win the cat fight, so mine's very close to well, that. Yeah, it's I, like a I, pun. I had right? I had the yeah. cat fight as yeah, well. Yeah, of course. So classic. Well, I, and I, I have did, to bring up the anchor boy because that's very similar. And I just unloaded four, you know, <laughs> on you instead of saying one and giving you like room <laughs> there. But yeah, Cougars win a cat fight yep. for me in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, and then I was going to go the whole weekend, but then I realized, oh uh, yeah, the women are not going to have played the second game assuming they went on Saturday, until Monday night. Yes. Which, my, my initial mind was like, oh, I was yes. going to do something with Sweet 16. It's like, no, they won't be there yet. 
right? Yeah, yeah, the, the game will not have yet happened. You might do the show from uh, Ann Arbor Monday. There you go. If BYU wins, it's from Ann Arbor. Let's hope you're in Ann Arbor. Hopefully, I'm still in Ann Arbor. I don't Ann want Arbor. to see you Monday know, I know. That, in studio. How disappointing would that be? I didn't want to think about a headline that would involve BYU losing in the first round of the tournament. I don't want to, Yes, we're not projecting no, that. No. In our biased opinion. Look at all the BYU. <laughs> what do we have, BYU 28 times here? Let's go. Mark Pope and his team are making plans for New York City already. They're talking about restaurants we're going to eat at. Maybe I should make my own restaurant plans in Ann Arbor. Hmm. Or am mm. I going to eat lunch on Monday afternoon because I'll still be there? and making final Some preparations for BYU's second-round game. Super nice deli or something you know, <laughs> in Ann Arbor. Wherever Jim Harbaugh gets his khakis, there's probably a th- place across the street. By the way, Ann Arbor, nice place, interesting place. It's kind of like the Portland of the Midwest. It's a, it's a little weird. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> and How for the, dare you? And for the men, uh, it'll be one more step to Madison Square Garden. Okay? Yeah. One more step. Yeah. I hope it's in Provo. And BYU is not having to travel to Dallas to take on SMU, and that I, BYU has another home game. Yeah, who's who's SMU playing? What's I I haven't even. Looked Aren't you at. our nit bracketology Do specialist? Right you filled it out. You filled out. The <laughs> I NIT really, bracket. I really didn't think I'd have it right there. Honestly, Let's go. And you were fourteen of sixteen in your nit bracket and your NCAA tournament bracket with no prep. That's the way I want to roll. Okay, uh, you know SMU is going to play Washington State, so go Cougs as a four seed. Okay. Okay. And then BYU and the Fighting Elite Farouk Maneshes of Northern Iowa. So hopefully Brigham wins. So we want a battle of the Cougars in Provo. We want Washington State. Yes, we do. And they're going to be ticked about Tyler Algier. Tyler's going to be honored at halftime of that game if if BYU is smart. Okay. You know, BYU is smart. I think they'd do that. That'd be funny. Um, Yeah. And then we go from there. And then we'll we'll see what happens on the other side of the bracket. Yeah. We 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 want uh, you know an opportunity of the Pac-12. That's been very easy. Uh, for BYU to get wins against the Pac-12. Football, men's basketball is like, is that even hard? Like, we lost to a WAC team. We didn't lose to a Pac-12 team. Maybe the headline for BYU men's basketball, and it could apply to women's basketball too, is from one cat fight to the next. <laughs> Pac-12 about to get beat again. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Topic two. Week three of sprint in the NIT bracket. See ya. Light it on fire. You got a lighter? Week three of spring football practice is in the books. Here's a recap of yesterday's practice from Dave McCann and Blaine Fowler. With the better weather, we're outside where it feels and smells like football. And Blaine, today we're talking about the receivers, the tight ends, this group that's going to be catching a lot of football. Yeah, and and as I watched today, it it really hit home with me how BYU is going to be able to put some lineups out on the field where defenses are going to have mismatches and have real struggle to try to cover people in the pass game. We talked to Puka. We've talked to uh, Chase Roberts. We've talked to Gunnar Romney today, Isaac Rex. All these guys, Dallin Holker, they they have, are so complimentary of the guys they're playing next to. Yeah, and if you think about it, I, you'll see BYU play a lot of what we call 12 personnel this year. One running back, two tight ends, and two wide receivers. I want you to think about the four across that front. They're going to be the receivers you, you, with Puka Nakua. Um, on the outside, right. and then um, Isaac Rex at tight end, Dallin Holker at the other tight end, and then and then Gunnar Romney at the other wide receiver. That's four guys across that front. That the secondaries are going to go. We can't put our best guy on one guy because the other guy will hurt us. We can't bracket people. We've got to play straight up defense and just hope for the best. That's it's going to be really challenging. That's quite a lineup to put out on the field. A lot of size to it, receiver. You got Puka at six two. You got. Gunner at 6'3", you got Roberts at 6'4", Hill is 6'3". These are big guys running around with speed. Yeah, and so it's and it's not just those those starters. And the tight end group is deep. Yeah. That wide receiver group, you know, Hill's played a significant amount of, of snaps, and he's experienced. He knows what he's doing. He looks like he's in great shape. Um, we were saying, did he gain weight? And Gunner told us, no, he's just he more ripped. Weight. Like he's he actually ripped. lost weight. He's shredded. Kind of like us. He's he, just shredded. He looks fit. He looks really, really good. And Chase <laughs> Roberts looks like a, a new guy off of his mission last year and had some surgery. He looks really fit. And he's a 6'4, 6'5 guy out there. Epps is looking quick. Nyberg, who returned a lot of punts for BYU last year, so he's been out on the field and experience. I saw him today running a lot of slot and, and catching some screens and doing things like that. So this is a deep group as well. Each receiver has told us that. Uh, Jaron Hall is looking fantastic. Now, this is their opinion of a guy who's got to get the ball out on time and into their hands. And each one of them said, oh, yeah, when are we? hey, how's Hall? And they pause and they go. He's good. He's got to Yeah, they, th- this is the year we've been waiting for because yeah. it all comes together when you have a veteran quarterback, you have a veteran group of receivers, you have a veteran offensive line and a good backfield. BYU's complete offensively, and this receiving uh, core is going to be something to watch. How about us in the sunshine tonight? For Blaine Fowler, I'm Dave McCann. 
Back to you. Dave back, and Blaine. Back to us. We are receiving, and we will move forward. And now we'll go back to you in the past. <laughs> yesterday afternoon. So they, they broke down wide receivers and tight ends. I know we're both excited about this as well because, uh, you know, with Puka being uh, the number one guy, Gunnar Romney is a proven guy. And then Chase Roberts and Keanu Hill. Keanu Hill had some really nice moments last year. He's going to be the number three probably. Then Chase Roberts is interesting because he was an All-American in high school, four-star, uh, three-star, four-star, depending on who you ask, out of American Fork. He's the RM version of Cody Hagan. Yeah, but taller. Right. Hagan's six one in speed. Chase uh, is not – he's fast, but not that fast. Meaning uh, but, just the metrics, the stars. Like, yes, like Big yes. get, right? Yes. I feel like Cody's a, a little bit bigger coming out of high school. But Chase is, like, ready to rock. Um, he last year dealt with a hamstring – Later in the year in practice, was making plays, dressed for a couple games, didn't actually play. But he's going to be perhaps number four, if not higher, on this team, which is exciting. And then, of course, Isaac Rex is getting healthy for the fall. Dallin Holker as well, um, you know, is in spring. Um, that's that's loaded. Like, if you have five guys, four, four that we know can play, right? We're expecting Chase to be able to, a baller as well. Like, five guys is awesome because typically you walk in with about three where you go, yeah, three and a half, and then who, who else is going to show up? I'm excited about Cody Epps in the future. I don't his numbers were bunkers in high school. Yes, he went through a rash of unfortunate and really unlucky injuries. Yes. The last si- 2 years from the time he got to BYU. So now, you know, fingers crossed he's finally getting healthy. Like and it, yeah, and if you have four or five wide receivers plus of course BYU always has a tight end or two. Let's go. An experienced quarterback, a really good offensive line. Obviously, we're stoked about the offense here. So again, why are we uh not expecting a lot out of BYU? Because of my great variable, yeah. the schedule. Yeah. Huh. I, and and we're going to discuss this here soon enough, but SP Plus has only one team in the top 25 right now preseason, Notre Dame at eight. And no Baylor, no Arkansas. Right? No, no Oregon. Stanford, no Oregon. Of course no Stanford. They stink. <laughs> but, like, yeah, it's interesting. No Boise State in the SP Right. Plus top 25. So, like, what's the win that BYU is going to surprise you with? And then what's the one that's the loss that's going to surprise you? know, there's it's likely something like that. But, yeah, and then, of course, Christopher Brooks and Lopini Catella. Where's BYU in the SP Plus? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, we got to take a closer look at that because maybe, maybe, well, yeah, of course. Yeah. Maybe they're a potential top 25 SP Plus team with all of that production coming back. Yeah, is BYU the second best team on its own schedule? Fun conversation. That's, that's, For know, another day. It's uh, Trust me, it's March 18th. we got a lot of time before football season starts. <laughs> We're going to be a – BYU's 23. There you go, Jerry. BYU's the second highest team on its own schedule. There you go. That means BYU will go 11-1 and one and get a New Year's 6 berth and finally play in the Fiesta Bowl. Blue you heard it alert. here first on the biased BYU sports. In all seriousness – at what point do we turn the page to the idea that, okay, maybe BYU is just better than most of the teams on their schedule and they win 10 games? Well, hold on. Do we want to do that, actually? Because then we set ourselves up. For C- disappointment? Yes, yes. How, like, how do you want to approach the season? We'll go into that <laughs> later. Do you want to just, like, go in? Do you want to, like, undersell it? Do you want to oversell it? What do you want? Our question of the day, what will the BYU headline be on Monday? You know, I'm going to do it. I told you I wasn't going to do it, but I'm going to present something yeah. that it's not going to be. Okay, Jerem? The headline will not be this. Ooh, I don't like this. Okay? It's not going to be catastrophe because BYU is going to win, and there will be no catastrophe yes. Yes, please. at the hands of the Panthers of Northern Iowa or the Wildcats of Villanova. Okay? I, yeah, no L's. A no L Saturday. All W's. Come on. Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. At Andrew G. Garrett on Twitter says, BYU basketball teams march on. Carry banner for entire state. Hashtag BYUSA. (laughs) That's true. By the way, St. Peter's verified. They got verified. (laughs) Men's hoops verified on Twitter. But uh, your boys still can't get verified. Not bitter about it at all. Coming up, <laughs> should Kalani Sitake be the next alum to sign up for the alumni game on the BYU TV app? Change your profile pic back to a blue goggle pic, and I bet they'll verify you with their blue check mark. Just a thought. If that's what it takes. Kristen Kozlowski joins us as she begins an epic 24-hour basketball bonanza in the NBA and in the NCAA tournament. This is BYU Sports Nation. 
This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by the Tim Daly Auto Group, serving Utah since 1968. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Oh, sixth seed BYU women's basketball begins March Madness, baby. Tomorrow against 11 seed Villanova, 1 Eastern time on BYU Radio. Spencer Linton and Kristen Kozlowski on the call from Ann Arbor, Michigan. It's going to be a busy next 24 hours for... Kristen Kozlowski specifically. We are live in Studio B with your day-to-day BYU Sports play-by-play. I am Spencer Linton. This is Jerem Jordan. And here is the fabulous Kristen Kozlowski joining us from somewhere in Salt Lake City, Utah, as she prepares to be part of an analyst team for an all-women's broadcast of the Utah Jazz tonight. Kristen, that is awesome. How are you? I'm great. Good to be with you guys. I've missed Vegas, but been very busy getting ready for this as well. What's been the most fun, most challenging part of all of this NBA preparation and then knowing you got to catch a really early flight to get to Detroit and call the BYU women's basketball game? Uh, It's a different ball game when you're studying the NBA. I mean, I've been engulfed in the women's game and obviously the men's game with the BYU men's team and, and doing all that. So now I'm diving into not only the jazz, but the NBA as a whole and getting into that. And so that's been really fun and interesting and getting to know the players of the jazz a little bit more in depth is kind of my role. And then obviously with that flight early tomorrow, so I'm double preparing tomorrow with BYU and Villanova in that first round where they're going to match up out in Ann Arbor, Michigan. There's a lot swimming around in that brain of yours. Uh, so it's Jazz Clippers tonight. So what what are your thoughts on uh, this game that you're going to uh, be involved in? Because it feels like like the Jazz feel more BYU than they used to because of Ryan Smith and Danny Ainge, at least to me. Yeah, I think tonight's going to be an interesting matchup. I mean, it, there's still a few games left. we got about 12 games left before playoffs start. So everybody's trying to secure their spot in playoffs right now. The Jazz are in the fourth spot. The Clippers come in. They're kind of locked in at the eighth spot. Clippers obviously have two stars missing. Paul George, Kawhi Leonard are out. So that's always been on everybody's mind when you look at the Clippers. Are they going to return? When are they going to return? They will not play tonight. I know that for sure. And so those players will be out. Jazz also missing some key players. Donovan Mitchell will not play tonight. There's also a couple others. So that really makes it a little bit more drama. Who's going to step up? Who's going to be in a different role, different starting position? But I think for the Jazz, this is a game that they should win. They have to continue to try to secure that fourth place spot, which gives them a home court advantage in the playoffs. Adrian Wojnarowski, you better watch out. Kristen Kozlowski may be taking over your job as an NBA analyst. It'll be, it'll be a cause bomb, not a Woj <laughs> bomb. It'll be a cause bomb. Okay, Kristen, nice. uh, clearly you're dialed in on this NBA game, but I kind of want to take a wide-angle view of this. What does it mean to you to be a part of this all-women's broadcast, which is getting, understandably, a lot of publicity? Yeah, I think it's amazing to be a part of of the women that are involved in this broadcast. These are women that I looked up to. You've got Natalie Williams, Jennifer Az, two players that played in the WNBA. This was when I was in high school, so back in kind of the late 90s. They were playing for the Utah Stars, two players that I remember watching as a girl in high school thinking, oh, I would love to do that. Oh, my gosh, I really looked up to them, right? So it's cool to be a part of it with those two ladies, both gold Olympic medalists, awesome players in college. And then Holly Rowe. Holly Rowe was one of the first that I ever started with at, at KBYU at the time, BYU TV back then. And full circle. But I think it's a lot, not only for the jazz program to do this, it's really cool that they're doing this and for women. To see the progress that women are having in the broadcasting industry and be a part of that is really unique. Yeah, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Okay, here at BYU Sports Nation, we take it not one game at a time, but two games at a time. So let's talk BYU and Villanova. BYU, according to ESPN, 11 point favorite in this one, but Villanova seems like a tough first round draw. What are your thoughts on the matchup? I think it's going to be a great game. Two teams that run a motion offense. BYU runs that four out, one in with Lauren Gustin. But you're going to look at Villanova that runs a five out motion. A lot of players that can do things off the dribble, that can hit shots from the outside. They love to get out and run. They have the number two leading scorer in the nation, Maddie Segrist. So she's a 6'1", post, inside out player, can hit it from the outside. 
does a lot on the offensive glass. She averages 9.5 rebounds per game. She's going to be a handful for BYU to slow down. It'll be interesting to see who they match up early on her, whether it's Tegan Graham. They may go small with Paisley Harding to start the game, just to be a little physical and if she's out on the outside. So I think it's going to be a great game. Kristen, what's the key to slowing down a dynamic scorer like Maddie Segris, who averages 25.9 points a game, and she almost averages 10 rebounds too? For BYU, they're going to throw a, a few different looks at her, whether it's different players like Tegan Graham. They may put Lauren Gust on her. So when they try to take advantage maybe of Paisley Harding, if she's guarding her on that mismatch, they'll switch it up. They'll bring in a double. And so I think giving her hard looks, like making her uncomfortable, make her catch that ball where she doesn't want to, where she has to work harder to get her shots. And then they're going to really have to do a good job keeping her off the glass. She can really get some cleanup points on the offensive boards. So keep her off the glass and do a good job on the boards. This team had an amazing regular season, and uh, it wanted to win the WCC tournament. Of course, Gonzaga won that. Do you feel like this team has to make it to the Sweet 16 to be in the conversation for best team ever at BYU? Is that the minimum threshold? I think in their minds it definitely is. Uh, for this BYU team, when they chant after practices, after games, when they finish their talking in the locker room, they chant Final Four. And so they want to get further than they did last year. I think that's been a focus from the start. They know that coming back this year, that was one of their biggest goals, not only to win the WCC, which I they did in the regular season. They won that outright, couldn't get it done in the title game. So I think coming in with a little bit of an edge, but I think for this team mentally, and I think for Jeff Judkins to feel like this is the best team that he's had, they need to make it past not only the first, but the second round and get into that Sweet 16. Kristen Kozlowski is with us on BYU Sports Nation. We need to revisit the BYU men's basketball team, too, because we know that you're watching the Cougars on the other side of the ball as well, and they're in the second round of the NIT. How would you describe the motivation that BYU needs to have if they indeed want to make a run to New York City? Well, I've been a player that has played in the NCAA tournament, and I've also been a player that's played in the NIT. And I'll tell you, that first initial kind of letdown of getting into the NIT is hard. Uh, but then I think you kind of refocus and you go, look, we, we have a chance to continue our postseason play and to keep playing, and we need to be grateful for that. And it's hard at times, fans, because you look at it and go, oh, it's second best or in the NIT. But I felt like BYU responded well, even though they got down a little bit in that game on Wednesday. They responded well, and they're starting to click. And this is a team that could make a deeper run in the NIT. And I think that if they can get some of those other players to step up, those support roles to help out um, AB, Alex Barcelo, I think this is a team that could not only win the next game, but, but win again. And so to go deep in the NIT, you have to be playing well as a team. You have to be excited to play. I think that's the biggest key. Postseason in the NIT, be excited to play. Be grateful for that. Don't just give up and say, hey, you know, we're not in the NCAA tournament, but be be excited with that energy. So they have to be able to bring energy, set the pace, play their tempo game, which is fast. They want to get up the court, push that ball. And that's something that I think they'll do on Saturday. Clear eyes, full hearts, can't lose. Kristen Kozlowski ready for the Jazz and to call BYU women's basketball. We're going to give you some BYU Sports Nation karma so that you have zero flight delays because, Kristen, I don't want to be calling this game alone in Ann Arbor. That's right. I need you there. Karma, so that you have a nice, safe, and uneventful travel out to Detroit and then Ann Arbor. Well, thank you. I appreciate it, guys. Kristen Kozlowski on BYU Sports Nation. She's so awesome. So for those who don't know, uh, she also calls the NCAA Women's Tournament for Westwood One on the radio. Sweet 16 and the Elite Eight. Amazing, right? Um, and now the Jazz is saying, hey, we want you over here for this game, which is super cool. So she's repping and crushing it. We're lucky that she's available for the first <laughs> yes, we are. and second rounds of the NCAA tournament yes, we are. on BYU Radio. We don't hire chumps here, just awesome people, except for us. Coming up, Paisley Harding from uh, Michigan on tomorrow's Game in the Dance. And what are we more excited about overall in March Madness when it comes to examining past relationships and how they relate to basketball? Is it the ex-girlfriend, the current girlfriend, or maybe the future prospect? We'll explain it all next on BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. Men's Hoops, second round knit game against Northern Iowa. Saturday night, pregame, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Let's go, baby. 
I want you to know that uh, my family is entirely bought in on the whole knit thing. Are they? Good. And now, because I mentioned my mom is a great knitter. Of course. So she sent out a group message after BYU had their explosive second half and won that yeah. game. And she said, now that's how you knit, but with the lowercase k. And then <laughs> caps N-I-T. Very, very nice. <laughs> now you know where I get my anchor boy tendencies from. My very witty mother. Absolutely. And you worked in traditional this is true. news, uh, sports news television for six years. Not everyone knows that, dude. It's also a valid point you bring up. Grand Junction for three years, Palm Springs for three years, and now uh, the Provo. There, was, there were many anchor boy moments in those six years. <laughs> I'm sure they were. They were seen by hundreds of people. <laughs> it's a catastrophe. He's Jeremy. No! I am Spencer. Bring that negative energy in here. That's my job. That's not going to be the headline. This is BYU Sports Nation. Interact with the show and get great content throughout the day. You can follow us on all of the social media platforms. Sometimes it's just all right. Facebook, just Twitter, kidding. Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. The Cougar Whip Around presented by Marisk, your integrated container logistics company, enabling global trade for a growing world. The social team is so mad at me. I know. Day one uh, play of the day, the Indiana cheerleader uh, getting the ball down or <laughs> the field? I'm, I'm going to go with the cheerleader getting the basketball down. It got yeah. so much run. Like, St. Peter's getting verified on Twitter is amazing. Uh, but that was the play. And the call by the CBS broadcaster was incredible. Oh, what a play! I think, uh, what's, I can't remember his name. But I think he saw Kevin Harlan do this with like a cat, you know, and it, it got On the some, field? Like, yeah, so freak out over He's a to the simple 10, thing. To yeah. the five! Touchdown! Yeah, crazy. <laughs> uh, no, that, I mean, St. Peter's was the story of the day. The play. But the play of the day was that. Matthias Toss wanted to get on a chair, and the ref was like, no. He didn't want to have some injury to a player yeah. that could have been catastrophic. Right? <laughs> let's, uh, so let's just put this young lady's life on the line. <laughs> well, Go ahead. Well, here's the thing. But she's an expert she's in this. Used to, yes, she's an expert she's in this. She's skilled at being um, you know, uh, so high there and just being held by her ankle. Like, unbelievable. It yeah. was so easy, too. Good call, it by It was Jesus. shocking how easy that was. <laughs> Amazing. You yeah. never know when you need to use your skills to help some other group, by the way. Be ready. There you go. Well Be done, ready. young lady. Life lesson. Indiana cheerleading. They didn't have much to cheer about yesterday against St. Mary's, that's for thing sure. They cheered about? That was their best play <laughs> of the game, right there nice. for sure. Okay, we're discussing former relationships as it pertains to basketball. Thank goodness, because okay? we're not discussing real ones. Jerem, do you get more joy out of the X, the Mountain West Conference, going 0 4 in the tournament? Okay. The current partner <laughs> the west coast conference going two and one one more year or the future love or flame the big 12 going two and oh in the ncaa tournament which way you lean in here current i'm faithful i'm living in the moment yeah. too. Yeah, yeah yeah absolutely i'm living in the moment although watching the mountain west go uh you know over was <laughs> somewhat enjoyable <laughs> <laughs> I, li- I, I liked that on uh, Facebook. They're so disrespected. And I bought into it. I was like, ah, oh, you know what? Like, I kind of feel weird about Boise State getting an eight seed. Like, But they looked way more concerned about the fact that they got an eight seed than they were about the actual game in the first half. They were down yeah. by 19 to Memphis at halftime. I don't wish the Mountain West ill, just one person in particular sometimes. <laughs> whose name I will not say, but you can guess. <laughs> if you tweet at me and ask me, and you get it right, I will tell you. Okay. Women's Hoops <laughs> yes. is an 11-point yeah. favorite, according to Espen. Will they cover? I think that's a healthy favorite line. Mm-hmm. Uh, I expect just an absolute battle against Villanova. A 6-11 game? Like, I expect like a 4-5 or five point game. So, I, no, I, I do not expect – a team, BYU specifically, to win by 11 or more. I expect singles. That's what I expect. I don't expect BYU to cover. If it's a true cat fight, Jerem, as you presented in Monday's headlines today, BYU winning that cat it fight. Will, it would be... Would that be an 11-point game? No, that would be a single digit. Yeah, it'd be scrappy, right? Well, either way, it's Kevin. Doesn't matter what's money. <laughs> if BYU wins by 30, it was a cat Maybe the catastrophe headline is for Villanova, Okay. If BYU wins by 11 or more, then that would be a catastrophe for the Wildcats. Is a cougar a wildcat? Like, is a wildcat a generic term? A a cougar's a mountain lion, and a lion is a cat. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, because they're in the wild? What's the Latin name of this, said no one? (laughs) Pluribus 
maximum. Yeah. <laughs> Caddius. Yeah, I have no idea. I have no idea. We do, we do the sports. Uh, not surprisingly, Kalani Satake, because of all these former greats coming back to compete in the alumni game, live yeah. on the BYU TV app on March yeah. 31st at 8.30 Eastern, 6.30 Mountain Time. He was asked if, uh, you know, he should play in the alumni game. And uh, here was his response. Uh, have the alumni come and try to, you know, pull some hamstrings or something like that. But, <laughs> I, mean, I, I, but I, I want to have it. We, it's going to be a lot of fun. We want to have our... our, our our players be mentioned again, you know, and um, but I will I will not be participating. I was gonna ask. <laughs> yeah, the the explosive movements on my part have gone away long long ago, and I keep it to sneezing as the explosive most explosive thing I do. <laughs> nice. It's a powerful sneeze. Can we play that one more time? But listen, but just we'll join in on the laughter of the cr- the group. Can we do that one more time? Can we just play it? But we'll join in on the fake really? laugh. Okay, we're gonna add this. We're gonna. We're going to join in with the yeah, laughing. Yes, the, like the, the obligatory, I've got to okay. laugh at this joke no matter what. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Uh, have the alumni come and try to, you know, pull some hamstrings or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to have it. We'll, All it's right, that's be a enough. lot of fun. <laughs> Should Kalani play in the alumni game? No. <laughs> no. No. He's the coach. Uh, he doesn't have to do jack squat. Yeah, he can sneeze on the sidelines. That's just fine. Yeah, come on. He could be the official. That'd be fun. No. Okay. Flags. No. Face guarding. Please don't call that like BYU intramurals. Would you wear a shirt that said Spencer is good? Oh. I bring this up because Zach Wilson <laughs> quoted a tweet that someone had a shirt that said Zach Wilson is good, and he said need one of these. So would you wear a shirt with your own name on it? Spencer mm. Linton is good. Mm. You know, somebody, like, gave it to me. Like... I, maybe it's like a joke or whatever. Well, you could buy it and say someone gave it to you. No, see, I, I couldn't <laughs> buy it. Like, I could not buy that and be like, you'd have to. Spencer it. Linton is good, that and feels, they're like, where? <laughs> that feels that feels vain as free. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I would never. But a I quarterback in the that that NFL, unless you gave it. To a quarterback in the NFL, I believe, should have that mentality. That'd be funny if. And here's the thing. The casual wear of professional athletes is on display constantly. When they walk in, you see what they're wearing. Like, fashion in professional sports is a thing. Yes, and you can make statements. Donovan Mitchell, when he was not the NBA Rookie of the Year, walked in with a T-shirt that was produced by Adidas, who's he signed with? Adidas, as most of the world says. It's true. That said, that had the definition of, like, what a rookie, rookie? is. Yes, I remember. <laughs> I remember. Coming up, Pride is on the line with today's Double Down Picks. And Paisley Harding of BYU Women's Basketball joins the program next. All access one-on-one with Jerem Jordan. What's the game plan to handle red-hot Villanova? Is Paisley going to be guarding their best player? This is BYU Sports Nation. Spencer Linton is good. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Softball doubleheader coming up tomorrow on BYU TV. It's Cougars host Southern Utah. Watch both games starting at 3 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. They'll have a little break between, about 20-ish minutes, and then uh, game two. Dave McCann and Gary Shidey on the call. Let's go. Let's go, Gary. When I, when I My first recollection of Gary was reading And They Came to Pass by Lee Benson, and Gary is the first quarterback in there. I was like, Gary Shidey was the man. And then I got a student job at BYU TV, and I was like, I get to work with Gary Shidey? Yes. Softball was my first game. It's gig. fantastic, it was right? Yeah, Gary's the man, dude. He is one of the kindest, most genuine human beings that I have ever met in my life. Great. He, he is so Great. fantastic. Okay, Paisley Harding. She uh, can play basketball really well. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's going to mm-hmm. play in her final NCAA tournament. Hopefully there's many games coming up <sighs> for her and the team. I talked with her last night from Ann Arbor. All right, Paisley. You're at the NCAA tournament. How's the experience been so far? Well, we got on the plane packed full of band and our cheerleaders. So that was really fun. And we traveled here. We got to the hotel. And we're in our rooms for maybe like 30 minutes and came down to have dinner. So that's pretty much where we're at at this point. But it's been good. You've been here before. How does this one compare in, I guess, day one and in your kind of mindset and perspective compared to the others? So... I can't really remember my sophomore year's like hotel experience that much, but I definitely remember last year's. 
And it's obviously different. We're the only team here in the hotel this year. While last year we had, I think like six other teams in the hotel because everyone was crammed in the same town and the same city. So that's definitely a different aspect. We got BYU music playing when we're walking in the doors and different banners up of BYU. So that was really fun. So, so far that's been different. Have you felt a difference with this tournament compared to last year and how the NCA has approached it? Because obviously things uh, came out about the weight room and boom, it set off this string of events, right? Um, so what's that been like? Um, I mean, I haven't, we haven't been here long enough to see fully that aspect of um, maybe the changes that they're putting in this year, but I did see on social media that uh, they're like goodie bag. They're um, pretty much swag bag was a, a box of a few things in it. So that's all I've seen. Um, I don't know what the men's have, but hopefully they're doing something. If they don't, I'll be pretty shocked, but hopefully they do. Absolutely. Okay. Obviously this is the last hurrah for you and several seniors has there been a conversation about what this means to you guys in the group out loud, or is it understood? Um, I think we as a team have always talked about wanting, like kind of expecting to be here at the NCAA tournament at the end of the year. So that was always an expectation, but I think we understood it was one day at a time, one game at a time that was going to be able to get us here. Um, I think our expectations one thing that we definitely did talk about a lot this last week was one game at a time. So we're really focused on Villanova right now and um, breaking down their film and defenses so that we can be able to attack them and take them out of things, their things the best. So right now we're just kind of focused on that. Um, as a team, I think we have a lot of confidence, which is important. And I hope we can contribute that onto the court. So I don't know. I'm, I'm really excited to see how this first game goes and actually get into practice tomorrow. I think that'll be a lot of fun. At this point where it's Thursday night and you've got, you know, almost two days, a day and a half or so. What, what do you know and, and about Villanova? And uh, at this point, do you care what seed you are or is it now we have a matchup? We just got to win that matchup. Seeding doesn't matter. Seeding does not matter right now. Like after selection Sunday after that it didn't matter like we we're in the tournament we know who we're playing so um yeah we know Villanova is a very five out offense type of team they're doing a bunch of cuts a bunch of flares um getting each other open with um screens and stuff like that so we haven't played against many teams like that this year I think we are a team we play against ourselves every single day so yeah. and I think we're very like Villanova in that way so, um, yeah, I think we'll be able to be up against good competition and something that we have seen before. Certainly a team that's beaten Connecticut has your attention. Granted, Connecticut had page backers out and, you know, another star out. But still, uh, Villanova seems like a sneaky 11. So uh, you guys have been here before. Nothing, you know, you can't take anything for granted. You got to win that first game and then see where you go, right? Yeah, the season is over when it's over. And it gets to continue as long as we're winning games. So that's kind of the focus. Um, definitely a sneaky 11 seed um, being able to be second in their conference and um, playing really tough against UConn. So um, definitely not a team to overlook at all. We are definitely someone that we're going in there and we have to take care of business that night to be able to move on. And I think we're all very focused um, and know that. We're talking to Paisley Harding from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, ahead of the NCAA tournament coming up Saturday against Villanova. At what point, and maybe you're still dealing with it, did you flush out the Gonzaga game, or was that some sort of motivation to bounce back for this tournament? How did you guys handle that emotionally? Um, I think it's great a mo motivation to come off a loss, especially against our team. I mean, we're going to be even more hungry now that we lost against Gonzaga in the championship of the, of our WCC tournament. Like that's only fuel to the fire. I think for us, we're really wanting to get back on, out on the court. We're all great competitors. I think our coaches are great competitors. So 
we're all just ready to throw the ball up again and go show everybody kind of like let that let this new game against Villanova kind of like push that one in the back burner. We've been talking about it all year of the sort of lack of respect and the people specifically. You had this really high net, yet you're the sixth seed. At the, do you guys care about that stuff? Like, do you feel like you need to validate your season in the NCAA tournament? Like, hey, if we won a couple of games here, we showed the committee that we were underseeded and the AP poll that we were undervoted. Does that matter? Um, I think in the grand scheme of things, that matters in the sense of showing co the competition BYU has up and coming. Because I think a big reason why maybe we were seated lower um, than other teams, maybe with similar records, was because of our history. We haven't um, been consistently good. The, since the five years I've been, been here, this is only the consecutive time we've been going to the NCAA. Mm -hmm. So that's definitely something that I think we need to continue the tradition of going to the NCAA every single year. Um, and I think that will show the committee and people the type of uh, are the programs to do. So I think um, in a sense, us doing well in these tournaments help us, especially as a mid-major, but I think also us going to the Big 12 in the next couple of years will also um, help our resume. Would have been nice for you to have one more year or two more years, I guess, to play in the Big 12, but you'll get us right near that, right? <laughs> yes yes see that's the thing like I have a special bond to this team so I, I only want the best for them I always want to help them and upgrade the program whichever way I can so yeah I'm really excited for the, them to go to the Big 12 Pacey Harding on BYU Sports Nation you can catch the full conversation on YouTube okay coming up rise and shout out to the Peacocks and nothing but pride on the line for today's double down picks yeah, well, I'm at a loss, so. That's what it boils They're down making to. me compete still. This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> They're making you. You're done. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. AB for three. BYU Sports Nation always available on demand via the BYU TV and it? BYU radio apps. Let him score. Come on. Let him score. I bet he makes it. Swish. That's an actual swish. Yes, it was. It's time for our double down picks. Maybe they'll feature if you know, you know. Alex Barcelo yes. and some three pointers. I'm going to start, Jerem. Please, go ahead. Because you're the winner, yeah. so it doesn't really matter. Yeah. Uh, number one, going with the women's basketball game here. Heck yeah. Maddie Segrist of Villanova, nation's second leading scorer, 25.9 a game, mm. will not be the game's leading scorer in tomorrow's BYU I versus Villanova it. showdown in the NCAA tournament. I love it. Number two. Northern Iowa, who can absolutely shoot the ball and the three and fill it up. They make like nine threes a game. Um, <laughs> they'll make eight or fewer against BYU, I hope, because if they make more than that, BYU could be done in the NIT. It's pronounced the uh, Number one, BYU goes for 71 plus against Villanova and women's hoops. They give up 70.9. Okay. So they're going to go north of that number. And the winning part is not part of the guess, but I hope that. <laughs> number two, I do, I do guess the BYU wins too. Uh, Shayla uh, six seed by 11 points. Yes, of course. Shayla Gonzalez and Alex Barcelo combined for 60 plus parbs. Parbs? Oh, what are parbs, you ask? Points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. Okay? I'm on a parb free diet. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to parb load coming up at lunch. They average 56 and a half parbs combined. Okay. Okay, they're going for 60 plus. Points, assists, rebounds, blocks, steals. By the way, Shaylee is at 31 and a half a game. AB at uh, about, yeah, what was it? 20, 25? Yeah, something, something like that. that. Yeah. Woo. 60 plus parbs combined between so the two stars. Parbs. Let's go. Come on. Our question of the day What will the BYU headline be on Monday? It's Monday's headlines today. Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resort from at Leams.123 on Instagram. Leams 122 and below were all taken. Okay. <laughs> dubs on dubs on dubs mm. is the headline for Monday. It's almost too modern for a newspaper. Headline, dubs on dubs which on is dubs. catered to people who read the newspaper. It's true. Which tends to be older. But that's fun. I What's like Monday's it. tweet today? <laughs> Monday's IG post today. Exactly. Today's rise and shout out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. St. Peter's, man. 15 seed winning. That was awesome, man. Blowing everybody's brackets up. 
Our thanks to today's guests, Kristen Kozlowski and Paisley Harding. Sorry they got verified. It. Yes, they did. St. Peter's. I thought you meant Kristen and Paisley. Sorry to Dennis, we ran out of. For Jerem, I am Spencer. Shout out to Stacy Jensen. She was on that 2002 Sweet 16 team. Yes, she was. Do it again, ladies. Go Cougs. We need a lot of wins this weekend. Come on.